It is 7.57 on your Thursday morning. You're watching News Channel 3 on WGNT. I'm Jessica Larchette. A University of Cincinnati police officer has turned himself in after a grand jury indicted him on murder charges. The state of Maine wants a health care worker who treated Ebola patients to stay at home, and they're considering taking legal action to enforce the quarantine. But the nurse says she's going to fight that. It is 5.27, so go ahead, stop what you're doing right now, and take a look at your television screen. A little girl with vision problems got to see her mom and dad for the first time and her reaction was priceless. 10 month old Piper was fitted for glasses and the camera was rolling as she went side to side looking at her mom and dad. Look at this. Well, you have probably seen him on Comedy Central, Tyler Perry's House of Pain. You got it? I know. You got it? <laughs> you gotta get ready it's, for the program. It's comfortable. News Channel 3 is taking action when it comes to health and fitness day 30 of the 31 day workout challenge was a beast. My thighs are on fire, oh, not yes. fire. You all have been following and supporting me for the last several years, down nearly 100 pounds. I got an email from <laughs> Women's Day. It's like, hey, we want to know more about this journey. Everyone has just been so supportive. It's been one day at a time. Yeah, and um, look at that. Mm -hmm. I have lost 90 pounds. I will lose another 90, but I've been following Jessica on her journey. And I also want to tell your news anchor, she inspired me to lose weight. So don't look at this bad because <laughs> I did lose 34 pounds. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do All it. Right, let's do it. Right. I pretty much stayed behind Kathleen the whole time. You know, for moral support. Oh, who am I kidding? Did I earn a superhero name? J-Lar? J-Lar, yeah. Sure. Awesome, that's what we want to do. JLAR. Mike, this is for you. Go ahead, Valerie. <laughs> the president of the National Alliance to End Homelessness says what New Orleans has done for homeless veterans proves that this is a problem that can be solved. As investigator Jessica Larche reveals, the board has a history of reinstating dentists with a shady past. After years of News Channel 3 investigations exposing more than a decade of Derek Broadway's history of bad dental work. You don't have anything to say about the disfigurement or leaving instruments in patients' mouths? And his criminal record for writing bad checks to his employees. It's like <laughs> ridiculous. You said it's <laughs> effing ridiculous? It is. You need to, you need this to is not ridiculous. You pay people checks. That's you get it the State Board of Dentistry revoked his license, but that doesn't necessarily mean he'll never practice again. News Channel 3's digging through nearly a decade of the board's records reveals they've reinstated dentists who've done time for distributing cocaine, performed unnecessary and excessive procedures, committed health care fraud, heated a dental probe with a cigarette lighter. We questioned the board's executive director, Sandra Reen, about what some patients call damaging decisions. How is it that a dentist like that is still allowed to practice? It's a judgment call of the board. And I mean, I can't elaborate. Records show that even though several dentists qualify for license revocation, the board usually orders suspensions, fines, and continuing education. They revoked less than a dozen licenses in the last decade and chose to reinstate some of them. The board reinstated Roy Shelburne after a federal court found him guilty of health care fraud. The board also gave Robert M. Block of Florida the green light to practice in Virginia. Records say he performed unnecessary root canals and violently slammed a patient's head back in a chair during treatment. Really, they are not <laughs> protecting the citizens of Virginia. It's ridiculous. Former Broadway patient Rosemary Rogers was livid Broadway's license wasn't revoked years ago. Records say he botched her root canal and falsified her medical records. The board suspended him for two months, fined him $20,000, and temporarily banned him from doing root canals. I don't understand. Does somebody have to die before they will revoke his license? Every day I would wake up, there was pus in my mouth. After hearing from Lamar Price, several other former patients, and dentists who said they had to correct Broadway's work, the board decided to revoke his license. Former patients pray the board doesn't ever deem him fit to practice. They're responsible just as much as Dr. Broadway and these other bad dentists. They knew about it. Now, the state just released this official ruling on Broadway. It says if he wants his license back in three years, three-fourths of the board has to agree. They're also fining him $5,000, and if he doesn't pay that in 45 days, it will be sent to collections. Jessica Larche, News Channel 3. Cheers and tears of joy filled the Norfolk Greyhound station Friday night as Bobby Mormon leaned down to embrace his family. It feels so good. It feels so good. I'm just glad he home. 
These kisses and hugs, his first embraces in nearly 23 years. Still like unbelievable, right? Now 41 years old, Mormon had been in prison since he was 18 for a drive-by shooting someone else confessed to at the time he was arrested. I spent 22 years, eight months, three days in there for something I didn't do. You're saying the wrong man has been locked up all these years? Yes, ma'am. For 23 years, Gino Payne has been telling police, judges, and a jury he was the one who fired the gun in that 1993 drive-by shooting. Happened at the corner of Ball and South Lakeland in Norfolk. No one killed, no one hurt. But court transcripts show the three people who felt they were targeted said they thought it was Mormon, their neighborhood rival, who shot at them. Records show that during that 1993 trial, Mormon's attorney asked the witness, can you say under oath who fired the gun? And the so-called target answered, not exactly. Time and time again, I admit it. To this day, I admit it. The jury was undecided at first, but when they came back with a guilty verdict, the judge sentenced Mormon to a maximum of 48 years in prison. I met the mom, and I couldn't do nothing. All I could do was just sit up there and hear that judge's words, what he said. And what he was going to do to my son. He only 18 years old. Now you're going to send him away for that law. All court appeals failed. Chances at parole denied. Two decades passed. But after our News Channel 3 investigation first aired in early 2014, defense attorney S.W. Dawson got involved. I mean, this man is innocent. He did not commit this crime. Dawson petitioned Governor McAuliffe for a pardon and pressed the parole board to take a closer look at Mormon's case. Mormon's parole was granted in November 2015. He was set free before dawn Friday. That was the main thing that could try to, to keep, that kept me, you know, from going too crazy, knowing that I can one day come back home to my family. Mormon has spent most of his life behind bars, but he says he's not bitter. Being mad about it is not going to change it. You see, so there's no need for it. Instead, he says he's focusing on being able to hold his mom's hand whenever he wants. <laughs> and laughing with the ones he loves without limits. Attorney Dawson is still working to get Mormon's crimes expunged from his record and compensation for the 22 years he spent in prison. Right now, Mormon is having a tough time finding work. He had dreams of being a Navy sailor, but that faded away in prison. To read more about what happened at Mormon's trial, log on to WTKR.com and click on this story. In the control room, Jessica Larche, News Channel 3. That grace is unmerited favor. It's something you don't deserve. All of this for me is not something I deserve, but it's a blessing that's come. I get emotional because... Sorry. Wow. <laughs> Inside Steve Vatsina's orchestra room, the miracle of music shines through every note. White, pure, clear, clean. And flickers in their eyes. I see in my students' eyes endless possibilities and dreams and desires and passion. It's that passion that's put Mr. V on a path to win music's highest honor as Educator of the Year. This all kind of brings up all of these emotions in me to know your life makes a difference, to know that the words that you speak and the, the attitude of your heart is affecting kids' lives for their future. His classroom, a crossroads of his past. Mom and Dad decided that I was going to be a musician and so I chose the violin because uh, it just seems so cool. And their futures. Because I believe they all have a calling and a destiny. Mr. V's been teaching more than two decades, and in between the waves of his baton, thousands of students' lives changed. In fact, it was a former student and someone that he mentored who submitted him for the Grammy Award. Who is Mr. V to me? And as part of those submission videos, one student explained how Mr. V used music to mend broken hearts. I, uh, I didn't have many friends. I actually got picked on a lot in school. He had this talent, this, this gift of giving to people just selflessly, and I feel like he gave that gift to me. 
Mr. V spread that gift all over the world, taking students on mission trips, using the power of music to weave worlds together. And for years, he humbled himself in front of the school board, begging to keep music programs funded. The fruits of that labor made sweet when his kids took home a top prize. And you know, teachers complain about we don't get paid enough. And would I like to have more money? Absolutely. But you know what? I get paid in that look, you know, you were talking about the, the eyes of a child. His riches ring out in this orchestra room and fall on ears eager to hear hope in between the notes. Music's a language that um, I think the heart has to be involved with. It's a passion. It's um, a communication. What is that song to describe this moment? In my heart, I know that this moment isn't something that I earned. It's something that's been given to me. It's, it's an amazing grace. We did it, Hampton Roads. You've been cheering me on, and now... My 100-pound weight loss journey is featured on the cover of Women's Day magazine. Is this really happening? This is beyond surreal. I couldn't have imagined this in 2012 when a high blood pressure scare prompted me to take action for my health. A peek inside the heart health issue of Women's Day magazine shows a snapshot of how healthier eating and more exercise put me on a heart healthy path. Flip the pages and you'll be inspired by my new friends in fitness. Kirsten Helly, a chef from Seattle, lost 103 pounds. Tracy Johns of West Virginia now competes in fitness competitions after losing 110 pounds. All right, so this is behind the scenes at the shoot. Tracy was up first at our photo shoot in Los Angeles at Smashbox Studios. A top-notch photographer, professional lighting. Walk into here. This is hair and makeup. Yep, they pulled out all the stops. The hairstylist even used a cool trick, a card to help create the perfect swoop. I'll be using that one in the morning. Oh, there was a wardrobe department too. I tried on a few different workout looks. Magazine editors gave this fun purple top and blue pants the thumbs up. Then it was time to turn on the charm and get ready for my close up. Now I have to admit, it was awkward at first, but I danced my way through it. Each time a hair was out of place, someone was there to fix it. Now, isn't that the life? And here's some of my friend Kirsten striking a few poses during her session too. Seems simple, but this was an all day affair, more than eight hours on the set. By the end of the day, all three of us were exhausted in the best and happiest way possible. When we took this photo, we had no idea the three of us would later be featured on the cover. This is an experience I will never forget. I have to thank our friends at the local Heart Association for nominating me for this. And like the title says, just walk. This journey to losing 100 pounds took me close to four years. One healthy meal, one workout at a time. The journey is never easy, never perfect, but always worth it. And you have the power to make it happen in your life too. In the control room, Jessica Larche, News Channel 3.